viewers welcome to my channel ITJ Olympiads and AP Physics with Ambarish. I am meeting you after a long gap of about 14 days. So without much ado let me straight away get into the solution of the problem that I presented 14 days back. And uh, here it is the problem uh, this is from Pathfinder challenge your understanding and uh, problem one from electrostatic. So let's uh, look at the problem. So what's the statement a frictionless non-conducting inextensible thread of length L where's three beads of positive charges q1 q2 and q3 so this is a frictionless uh, string and there are three beads q1 q2 and q3 uh, which are threaded onto the uh, string okay the ends of the thread are connected to make a knotless loop loop length of the thread is so large as uh, compared to the size of the beads that the beads can be treated like point particles the system is in a state of equilibrium with beads at vertices of a triangle find the lengths L1, L2 and L3 of the sides of the triangle and what relation the charges Q1 and Q2, Q, Q1, Q2 and Q3 must bear to establish the above mentioned state of equilibrium. So if you want you can give it a try. I'll get into my analysis right away. So let's see how to do this one. Okay. And I'm going to present a very cute little solution. There exist uh, very long solutions. I've done uh, longer ones earlier but uh, I grew wiser. Uh, thanks to one of my students, uh, Arihant Vashisht, uh, who uh, spotted this uh, cute uh, little trick that I'm presenting here. Okay, so here it is. Now, uh, since the thread is frictionless, the tension throughout the thread is same. So whatever is the tension here, here, throughout the thread, tension is same. And if you look at the FBD of uh, bead A, so there is one tension acting here and the same tension T is acting here. So therefore resultant tension is acting along the bisector. So that's what I have, I have shown here. So T, T, the resultant is along the bisector. And therefore the, uh, uh, to cancel this, since bead is in equilibrium, so to cancel this, the electrostatic force must also be along the bisector in the reverse direction, right? And if uh, the resultant is along the bisector of two forces, that means what? These two forces must be equal. Isn't that uh, neat? that's pretty neat uh, uh, and it finishes off the question just like that we know that these two electrostatic forces must be equal why because the resultant is along the bisector finish okay so now i just need to write the correct equations and solve them that's it so that's what i've written since the resultant of the two tension forces along the bisector of bac angle resultant of electrostatic repulsions f21 and f31 that is this and this must also be along that bisector so f21 must be equal to f31 the resultant of two forces along the bisector the two forces are equal so now it's simple so kq1 q3 upon l2 square must be equal to kq q1 q2 upon l3 square that is product of these charges divided by this distance square is equal to product of these two charges divided by this distance square so if you want you can cancel off q1 on both sides k on both sides so neat little equation q3 by l2 square is equal to q2 by l3 square similarly uh, we can do this for the other two beads also. Uh, you just need to do it for one more bead because we have length conservation equation that is L1 plus L2 plus L3 is equal to L. And this is uh, for charge Q2. So KQ2 Q3 by L1 square is equal to KQ2 Q1 by L3 square. Again, you can cancel KQ2 and KQ2. So Q1 by L3 square is equal to Q3 upon L1 square. So now 2, 3 and 4. These three equations are there which have the unknowns L1. L2 and L3 and we can just solve them readily for L1, L2 and L3. If you do that, uh, you can get these uh, solutions. They are very fairly easy equations to solve. So this is what you get as answers L1, L2 and L3. Uh, so if you can just look at L1, other two are the just cyclic expressions. So L1 is L root Q2, Q3 upon root Q1, Q2 plus root Q2, Q3 plus root Q3, Q1. And also uh, in part B of the question, it was asked that what should be the relation between Q1, Q2 and Q3 so that uh, this type of triangle can be formed. So you know that uh, to form a triangle the sum of two sides must be greater than the third side. So if you uh, use that inequality so this uh, must be uh, okay. So we can say that uh, uh, this plus this must be greater than this. So these three inequalities are written here. So simple uh, conclusion we can draw here for part B is uh, pretty simple. So that's my analysis for the problem and uh, if you like the analysis of this problem, please do uh, give a thumbs up to my video. Please share this video as much as possible with your friends through WhatsApp, Telegram, Discord or whatever medium you use for interacting with your fellow students. Uh, and most importantly, if you have not already subscribed to my channel, please do subscribe to my channel. 
because that's what keeps me motivated to do a new video uh, now i maybe i shouldn't say every day but uh, frequently uh, i'll i'll try to maintain it as frequent as possible as much time permits thanks a lot for watching this video and i'll see you in the next one and as always god bless you all thank you